What bits of this do you actually disagree with? Because it starts to look a little bit like a rather socialist budget. I mean, an uplift in benefits payments, wealthy paying more, six billion quid on insulation, no fracking, windfall taxes. Did you write this yourself? But look, we went into this autumn statement with two tests. Number one, is it going to see the Chancellor making fairer choices about taxation in this country? And number two, are we going to see a plan for growth? And actually, on both of those counts, he failed. You know, firstly, in terms of fairer choices, um, he introduced stealth tax rises on working people, talked about an increase in council tax and so on, uh, but had nothing to say about some of the plans we've been pushing for, for weeks or months about fairer taxes, like scrapping the non dom down into those, yeah. Role, like just, really strengthening just, some of the loop. Just do me a favour, James. Just, just, just quickly, just quickly, James. I don't know if you can hear me over that idiot behind you there with the blaring music. But just, just tell the nation where exactly you would make more cuts, though, because 55% of people apparently are going to be worse off. We're seeing a lot of people paying more tax. So, so where would you get the fairer taxes from? Is it just tax the rich more? Well, we've been setting out our plans for fair attacks for, for, for many months now. So I'll give you one example. Uh, an example is scrapping the fact that private schools get VAT relief uh, on their fees paid. Now, if you scrap that relief, that would raise £1.7 billion. Pounds. And, you know, it's actually quite astonishing that the Chancellor decided to defend uh, the tax relief, the VAT relief for private school fees uh, in the Chamber today. So there's one example. Another example, a, a non-DOM tax loophole that was talked about a lot uh, in relation to the current Prime Minister's uh, family and so on. That's an obvious loophole which can be shut down because it's only used by people who live here and should be paying their fair share. But how much, here. sorry, that's sorry, just quickly, but that's... Billion pounds. So, so that again, how much? And that's £3.2 billion pounds for closing the non-DOM tax loophole. So I'll give you some examples here, but the point is there are choices to be taken by the government, and the government is taking choices which are raising taxes on working people through their stealth taxes and their council tax increase, and they're not taking the choices that we say they should, which would make a fairer tax system. But, but so okay, so not making um, private schools essentially, I suppose, avoid VAT and non-DOMs that brings you in three billion. But that's small change given the rest of it as well, isn't it? So, so what other areas are you would you be raising this money from, really? Because I don't quite understand how you would not end up cutting. What bits of this do you officially disagree with? Well, look, I think it's worth taking a step back and thinking about how this all adds up. And actually, the missing part in all this is a plan for growth. Because, you know, as we've said time and time again, we're in a kind of doom loop. Uh, you know, to quote the former Conservative Chancellor, a vicious cycle of stagnation uh, is what the UK economy is facing. And this is the result of poor growth. And that's not just the result uh, of the last few weeks and what Liz Truss did. This is the result of the last 12 years of the Conservative government, where our growth has been a third lower than the OECD average. And you bring us forward to the current day, we are the only G7 economy which is still smaller than it was pre-COVID. And if you look forward, over the next two years, our growth forecast is at the lowest of G7 and OECD countries. So there is a real record of failure to grow the economy there. And we've already heard business groups yeah. and so on come out today saying just, just there's quickly. nothing in the, what the Chancellor said to reassure okay. them about growth. And there's no plan for growth. And without that growth, uh, we're not going to get in our stable footing. You're being a bit disingenuous here because Jeremy Corbyn's big financial package, which was basically dish out a load of taxpayers' cash to absolutely everybody, I don't really think that would have led to too much growth, would it? And presumably you backed that at the time. Well, look, we've set out our very clear fiscal rules of how we would approach the economy if we were in government. If Rachel Reeves was the Chancellor, we would make sure that all day-to-day -day spending is paid for through tax receipts, borrowing would only be allowed to invest, and we would get debt falling as a proportion of GDP. Now, those fiscal rules have been with Rachel Reeves' policy agenda throughout her time as Shadow Chancellor. That's what we would do if we were in government. Uh, we are earning people's trust by showing that whenever we make a promise, whenever we make a pledge, it's fully funded and fully costed. And crucially, alongside that sound management of the public finances and financial stability, we have a plan for growth. And that would get the economy growing and get us out of this vicious cycle of stagnation that we've been stuck in for so long.